if there's one lesson that I feel is the most important for geometry, it would be this one, angle relationships. There are some key concepts that we're going to be learning in this lesson that are going to be vital to many of the things we'll be doing in class this year. The main thing we're going to be learning here today is definitions. Unlike some other math classes, geometry, as you've already probably figured out, is a lot about words and a lot about what those words mean. Definitions. So here we go. Adjacent angles. The word adjacent means next to. So when we have adjacent angles, it is two angles in the same plane that have a common vertex and a common side, but no common interior points. The key to understanding adjacent angles is knowing that they must share a vertex, a side, and that they do not overlap. So as we look at the pictures below, take a moment and look at each one of them and decide which one would represent what you would think would be adjacent angles. There is actually only one correct answer in the pictures below. If you said angles 1 and 2 form an adjacent pair of angles, you would be correct. They share a common vertex, where I just drew the green dot. They share a common side, which I just traced in green as well. And they have no overlap. As we look at the other two examples, angles 3 and 4 share a vertex. However, if I trace angle 3, and I trace angle 4, they have no common side. In other words, as I trace those two angles, they never overlapped with the green rays. The other example with angles 5 and 6, as I trace angle 5 in green, and then I trace angle 6 in blue, you'll see they do have the overlapping side, but what they lack is a common vertex. Angle 5's vertex is circled in green. Angle 6's vertex is circled in red. So they do not share a vertex. So therefore, they have no common vertex. The next is incredibly important. So if you do not understand vertical angles after this slide, make sure and come and talk to me at school and we'll clear up any confusions you have. Vertical angles. Two non-adjacent angles formed by two intersecting lines. Remember, non-adjacent means they're not going to be next to each other. That is very different than saying adjacent. And we have intersecting lines. That is very, very important. As you look at the two pictures below, which one looks like it matches up and makes vertical angles? If you said the one on the left, you'd be correct. Remember, it's two non-adjacent angles, which actually we can see in both of them, we have non-adjacent angles. So that part is part of both of our pictures. But what we need is intersecting lines. As I trace the picture on the left, the first line is in red, the second line is in black. Remember, lines are objects with no ending points that continue forever. We often use the term straight line, but all lines in geometry are considered to be straight. So this is an example of vertical angles on the left. If we look at the picture on the right, we notice, again, we do have the adjacent angles part, but as we trace the lines, 
the first line indeed exists, but when we go to the second one, when we hit this center area, the line takes a turn. So it is no longer a line, but actually two rays. So we do not have vertical angles in the picture on the right. Now to identify the vertical angles, it actually is always done in pairs. That's why we say it's two non-adjacent. So we could say angles one and three are vertical. Or we could say angles two and four are vertical. Think of them being across from each other whenever you see an X. Look for the X and then identify the two angles that would be across from each other forming a vertical angle pair. Based on what it looks like, name a pair of obtuse vertical angles. There's a lot going on in this picture, so I think you better pause it in order to be able to answer this question. Hopefully you tried to answer the question of finding a pair of obtuse vertical angles. First off, we have to remember what does obtuse mean? If you remember back, obtuse means an angle whose measure is more than 90 but less than 180. So if I look at the picture, as I trace angle A, that would be an example of an obtuse angle. However, there is nothing vertical to it because in order to have a vertical pair, we would need two lines. And in that air picture that I just drew, or that, that I just traced, there's only one line and a ray. So remember, when I said we're, when we're looking for vertical angles, I said to look for the X. I just traced for you on the screen an X. That actually is two lines. Therefore, we do have vertical angles. I'll shade the inside of one of them. Angle C, D, B. That would be a vertical angle. Can you identify what it would be vertical to? If you said angle E, D, G, you would be correct. However, are those two vertical angles obtuse? The answer is obviously no. They definitely do not measure more than 90 degrees. So let's try one more time. I'm going to trace the same lines. But instead of going inside this time where I put the two little red dots, I'm going to go to the outside. The area that I'm coloring in blue. The angle here that I just colored in in blue would be angle C, D, G. Now what would be vertical to that would be directly across through the X on the other side. So we could have angle B, D, E. Now we have a pair of vertical angles. We have BDE and we have CDG. There are other ones in this picture. We could have used angle F, E, A and angle D, E, G as well. Again, if you do not understand what vertical angles are, please make sure to ask me in class. Our next definition is a linear pair. So, so far today we've talked about adjacent angles, vertical angles, and now we have linear pairs. A linear pair of angles is a pair of adjacent angles whose non-common sides are opposite rays. 
kind of a confusing definition, but there's an easier one to remember. When you're looking for a linear pair, look for a line and a ray. So for a linear pair of angles, you want a line and a ray. Can you find it in these pictures? There's actually a few examples of it, and then one wrong example. The one here on the right does not have a line and a ray. It actually has three rays. So that one we cannot use an example. The first example with angles one and two is a really good example. It's very clear. We have a line, and on that we have a ray. So we would call angles 1 and 2 a linear pair of angles. Two angles on a line. Now that you see how that example works, you can see in the picture below. Angles 6 and 7 would make a linear pair. Angles 7 and 8 would make a linear pair. Angles 8 and 9 would make a linear pair. And angles 9 and 6. Because all of these are two angles on a line along with a ray. Quick review, what would angle 6 and 8 be called? If you said a vertical pair, you are correct. Good job. Now complementary angles, I know you learned about in the middle school. So hopefully this is a bit of a review. Complementary angles are two angles whose measures have a sum, remember sum is addition, have a sum of 90 degrees. So we're looking for any two angles that add up to 90 degrees. In this picture, angles 1 and 2 would add up to 90 degrees because they're on a major angle of 90 degrees that's separated by a ray. So the two smaller angles do add up to 90 degrees. The two pictures to the right, angle K and angle J, if we added those two together, we would also get 90 degrees. So we have two examples, one where the angles are in one picture and one when they're separated into two pictures. So when we're talking about complementary angles, they do not have to be in one picture. They can be separated apart. Now on the bottom of the screen, I have a statement here. I'll move it up. It says, write a general equation to model complementary angles. What I'm asking you to do is write this. Angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 90. That is the equation we would use every time for complementary angles. Next we have supplementary angles. Supplementary angles are very similar, however, they're two angles who add up to 90, or excuse me, 180 degrees instead of 90, like complementary. So supplementary is 180, complementary is 90. In the two pictures below, if we think of this line if we measure from one side of the line to the other side of the line, it's 180 degrees. It's half a circle. So if I, whatever angle 1 is, if I add angle 2 to it, we're going to get 180. In the picture on the right, I have an angle that's 40 degrees and an angle that's 140 degrees. Obviously, if I add those two together, I'm going to get 180 degrees. So we, in both pictures, we do have an example of supplementary. Now it's your turn. Write a general equation to model supplementary angles. I'll give you a moment and then I'll give you the answer. If you need more time, press pause. The general equa equation we should use is angle 1 plus Angle 2 equals 180 degrees.
The last term for this section is perpendicular. Perpendicular, as we've been talking about in class, is lines, rays, or segments that intersect at right angles. Remember, a right angle is an angle that measures 90 degrees. Which of the following would be considered to be perpendicular? I hope that you could see that this one would match up the, def the definition because it meets at 90 degrees, which is a right angle. So in that picture, we have two segments that are perpendicular. Similarly, I hope that you can see this. We have the right angle symbol in the center, so those two lines do meet and make perpendicular lines. Now if you said the purple one that has the M and the N on it, that actually will not work. We have no information on there other than what we're going by visually. It looks like they're right angles. We do not ever go by looks, so for that reason we cannot say that those lines are perpendicular. Lastly, in the green example, we do have perpendicular. If you add 63, or excuse me, 67 and 23, you would get 90. 90 degrees is our right angle, so we do have perpendicular segments in that picture. Last thing for today, things you can assume in geometry and things you cannot. If something looks to be straight, we can fairly assume that it is. It looks straight, it is straight. The other one is if it looks like two things are crossing, it is fair to assume that they do intersect. So if it looks like an intersection, it is. Now there's a few more things that you cannot. We cannot assume congruence. That means same shape or same size. We also cannot assume that things are perpendicular. So if we do not see the measures or the markings that make 90 degrees, they are not perpendicular. And lastly, we never ever can assume something's size, which includes measure and length. There may be a little quiz coming up on these words, so make sure that you know them really well. And if you don't, make sure to ask me in class.